Felda top breast net for graft. Floods displace hundreds in several states. Hi, I'm Sohaila Saifuddin with Kappa News. The MACC has arrested five high-level personnel from Filda, including a dato over alleged abuse of power related to a 47.6 million ringgit sturgeon farm project in Pahang. The Dato is a 57-year-old former general manager, while the other four are a 53-year-old former deputy director general for strategic resources, a 38-year-old head of London Properties Felda, a 30-year-old officer in charge of the Sturgeon Project, and a 33-year-old assistant manager. They were picked up today in several locations around the Klang Valley under an operation dubbed Ops Caviar. All five are believed to have abused their positions in the company for personal gain since 2014. MACC Investigations Director Simi Abdul Ghani confirmed the arrest and added that the documents related to the project were also confiscated to assist investigations. The suspects are expected to be brought to the Putrajaya Magistrates Court for a remand hearing tomorrow. In the latest wave of arrests by the Kelantan Forestry Department, 16 orang asli and two freelance journalists were detained over the anti-logging blockades in the Bala Forest Reserve. According to lawyer Siti Kasim, enforcement officers dismantled the Matau Chawas blockade near Post Bihai and arrested the 18 people. I was told the journalists were being handcuffed, uh, you know. So these would yeah. be this would be um, was it the ten cars from yesterday that were that didn't come out or is it a new the, a new batch of people? This, yeah, this, this is the new 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 batch. The one yesterday was gone. Uh, that one is from the Simpang Pete blockade. This is getting too much, you know. They are really doing uh, uh, you know things which is uh, out of their jurisdiction, and uh, and we want the police to do something. We we hope the police will actually take action. The arrest came a day after the officers demolished a blockade at Simpang Pete, where five Orang Asli activists were detained. City later posted on Facebook that the 21 Orang Asli have been released while the two journalists remain in detention. She anticipates that the department's next move would be the remaining blockade at Post Pase, but access to the area was difficult after a bridge collapsed due to heavy rain. Meanwhile, the Kelantan police chief said his men would not be interfering with the forestry department's work. Uh, saya tak nak komen banyak ya, sebab ini melibatkan jabatan perhutanan negeri. Di peringkat PDRM, kita hanya diminta bantuan untuk memberi keselamatan, security coverage kepada petugas-petugas jabatan hutan negeri yang hendak melaksanakan operasi. Di kawasan terlibat, ya, operasi di kawasan terlibat. State Forestry Department Director Zahari Ibrahim claimed the destruction of the blockades was part of a major operation to weed out illegal sawmills in several permanent forest reserves. He said the areas where permission was given for logging was not within the Orang Asli native grounds and the blockades violated forestry laws. Malacca has become the latest state hit by floods, while Negeri Sembilan has been placed on high alert following continuous rain over the past two days. The new development in Malacca brought the total number of states affected by floods to eight, including Selangor and Pera, while the situation in Kelantan, Johor, Sabah and Sarawak remain unchanged. So far, a total of 6,288 flood victims in those states are taking shelter at 71 relief centres. Tronganu has just recovered from the fourth wave. Meanwhile, the Sultan of Johor made a surprise visit at an evacuation centre in Kota Tinggi. Speaking to reporters, Sultan Ibrahim Ibni Almarhum Sultan Iskandar said that early preparations by the state government in forming a committee of floods had eased the evacuation process. The ruler also advised parents not to allow their children to play in flood waters to avoid untoward incidents. Asian Trans-Pacific Partnership nations have pledged to salvage the trade accord after U.S. President Donald Trump kept his promise to pull out of the 2015 agreement. All right, we're going to sign three memorandums uh, right now. The first one is withdrawal 
uh, from the United uh, of the United States from the Trans Pacific Partnership. Everyone knows what that means, right? We've been talking about this for a long time. Thank you. Okay. Great thing for the American worker, what we just did. Trump's decision, however, opens the door for the remaining 11 members of the pact, who are more reliant on trade to bring other nations, in particular China, into the negotiations. We want to have more opportunities with more markets. We already have a China-Australia free trade agreement. Uh, certainly, there is the potential for China to join the TPP. It is possible that US policy could change over time on this, uh, as it has done on other trade deals. Uh, there is also the opportunity for the TPP to proceed without the United States, and I've had active discussions with other leaders as recently as last night uh, with uh, Prime Minister Abe about that. International Trade and Industry Minister Datuk Sri Mustafa Muhammad in a statement said it would be a missed opportunity for Malaysia. But the country will focus on enhancing the economic integration of ASEAN, push for the timely conclusion of the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, RCEP, and pursue bilateral free trade agreements, including with TPP members. Plantation Industries and Commodities Minister Datuk Sri Masiu Kyong said there will be new markets to export Malaysian commodities, especially palm oil. Palm oil, naturally, I'm disappointed because it could have been a very big market. The tariff would have been straight according to the arrangement. Nevertheless, uh, we are going to explore the other countries. We hope to export more to Europe and uh, Africa, India, Iraq, China. And uh, we have been very working very hard to maintain the sustainability of Malaysia and Palm oil. President Barack Obama's administration had touted the TPP agreement as a strategic counterweight to China. According to a Peterson Institute analysis, the U.S. stood to be the biggest beneficiary from the pact, with an annual increase in exports of $357 billion. In other news, AirAsia X has received clearance from the Federal Aviation Authority to fly to the U.S. According to its group CEO, Datuk Kamaruddin Muranun, the airline is the first Asian low-cost carrier to secure approval and operate services to any destination within the US. He added that AirAsia X is currently considering flights to several US states, including Hawaii, as part of its route expansion plans. The announcement came a day after AirAsia denied any connection to the corruption scandal engulfing Rolls-Royce, which reportedly paid millions of dollars in bribes to win contracts. In a separate development, Deputy Transport Minister Dato Abdul Aziz Karpawi has denounced motorcycle taxi service Dego Wright as being illegal. Speaking to reporters after launching a road safety campaign in conjunction with Chinese New Year, he said that the government has yet to issue licenses to enable motorcycles to ferry passengers. He added that the Road Transport Department has been instructed to take action against the motorbike taxi company. Launched in November last year, Dego Ride utilizes a similar model as Indonesia's OJ, which fares starting at 2 ringgit 50 cent for the first 3 kilometers. Floral tributes continued to flow on Tuesday as Australians mourn the victims of the Melbourne car rampage. A makeshift memorial has been set up on Bourke Street where a man deliberately drove into pedestrians last Friday. Five people, including a 10-year-old girl and a three-month-old baby thrown from his pram, were killed. The 26-year-old accused killer has been charged with five counts of murder. In Hong Kong, an unexploded World War II bomb was unearthed at a construction site on Port Fu Lam Road. Dozens of construction workers and residents were evacuated and the roads in the vicinity were closed for more than eight hours until the bomb was dismantled. 
The bomb contains 120 kilograms of explosives and its shrapnel could fly as far as 2,000 meters if exploded. Three puppies were rescued at the Rigopiano Hotel in Abruzzo, Italy, which was hit by an avalanche last Wednesday. The Abruzzo sheepdog puppies were found in the hotel boiler room by fire department personnel. The death toll following the avalanche stands at six, while 23 people remained missing. Who's that? You must be new. That is Bruce Wayne. Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice is among the nominations for the annual Razzie Awards, a tongue-in-cheek ceremony that lists the worst films of the year. Ben Affleck was nominated for his role as Batman in the movie, which is also the running for the worst sequel and worst screenplay category. Other movies include Dirty Grandpa, Independence Day Resurgence and Zolanda 2, which received eight Razzie nominations. With a look. Wait, Magnum, now! Oh, you have this! Oh, yeah. Tequila! Oh. Maybe we could try a washcloth. My pick for West Film would be Zoolander 2. And that's all we have for today. Good night.